Good evening, my dear. I hope you don't mind me coming in unannounced. I will look the other direction until you feel more comfortable. I do hope you found everything to your liking. No. If you need more beverages, or perhaps books to read, I would be happy to provide them to you. Or really, any necessity you ask for. If not that, then clearly something upsets you. Not that this would be the case, but it's best to ask. Have the gods hurt you in any way, while escorting you to your new chambers? Good. And I say unlikely, because for them, it would be suicide for them to put their hands on you. I made that absolutely clear. Punishment? My dear, that is nothing for you to worry about. Let's just focus on making you more at home. Is there anything that I can do to at least make you satisfactory? You know I can't. Well, if I let you run around amok, especially in the state you are now, you can break something valuable, eat something you're not supposed to, get hurt, or worse, you can run away. Of course, I would love nothing more than to have you do whatever you like. Just with me, of course. I want to trust you, my dear, I really do. But this... I'm not exactly seeing any progress right now. Yes, yes, you're right. Trust goes both ways. Me wearing a mask has nothing to do with trust. At least not yet. As I said, I don't remove my mask for personal reasons. Hmm. Then allow me to offer you an idea. Why don't I provide you a tour of my home? That way you can get more familiar with everything and I can remain with you in the meantime. And perhaps we can become more comfortable with each other. <laughs> well, it's no secret I fancy you. You've caught my eye when you told me about how you made the journey up here with your sense of magic. I was surprised to see that in an adventurer such as yourself. But the moment you smiled in my company, I just couldn't let you go. You even said I was handsome while I wear this mask. You are unlike anyone I've ever met. So on that note, why don't I leave you for now, and I'll come back in the evening to take you on the tour. After you eat, of course, it's a big place. You will, of course, be needing your energy now, if anything else comes to mind in the meantime, my guards are just outside. They may not speak, but they understand. I look forward to this evening, my dear. I have returned, my dear. Are you ready? M my, you certainly look your best. I feel underdressed now. <laughs> oh, come now, you look wonderful. No need to be shy. Where was that confidence smirk you gave me when we first met? 
I'm sure we'll get back your confidence in no time. My confidence? Because of the mask. <laughs> if only that were the case. Come. Let us not waste the precious night away. First, let me show you the Grand Hall. Each column has different ornaments to show the path to each of my retainers, if one needs to find them. The two grand columns at the end are directed towards my wing of the castle. I have quite a few followers, and the ones I find truly loyal, I provide them with a part of my abode. As far as the Grand Hall, that's really the only thing that's special about it. From here we have quite a few paths. May I interest you in the Grand Library? As I recall, you are seeking magic artifacts, and perhaps the library will have further information on the topic. <laughs> Your eyes widen indeed. Very well, let's make our way over. Welcome to the Grand Library. Here we have a total of nine floors with 1,757,965 books, ranging from topics of geology, spells, sword techniques, and even lullabies if you care to learn a few. Now, my only warning is if you are arachnophobic, to never look at the very top of the library. Our lovely librarian likes to keep her many eyes on things. As long as you don't make too much noise, she won't have to come to you and ask to remain quiet. Otherwise, you can always call her down if you need assistance to find any certain books. Shall we move towards our next destination? You look eager. <laughs> then let's go. Ah, uh, here we are at the Astrologicum. This is where we cure our curiosity of the unknown and delve deeper into the stars. As like before in the library, you will also notice a great many books. These are to guide us through the many stories and sightings that have been seen in long past concerning the cosmos. There are others like us out there. But there are beings that can be considered infinite, majestic, even horrific. Personally, it's the unknown that frightens me. I would introduce you to our lead researcher here, however he seems preoccupied at the moment. As you can see, He's an eldritch being that comes from the very stars itself. Yet, even he is eager to learn what could be out there. Makes you feel small, doesn't it? The fact that someone from the stars still wants to know what else is out there. We also do have many prize findings, such as a meteorite that carries living cells on it. We currently have it contained until our lead researcher sees about its safety to conduct more tests on it. Our forge master is very insistent we use the meteorite, <laughs> well as material, to make me a weapon in my honor. But I am quite content with my blade. Not to mention, I'm more curious about what we can learn. Whenever you have free time, feel free to come back and take a look through the telescope itself. You will be amazed seeing things that cannot be seen with the naked eye. The ceiling? Oh, no, no, no. That is just a projection of the stars. It's more of decorations. It helps our lead researcher feel at home. Now we should leave him back to his work. I'd hate to interrupt him. 
Why don't we head to the laboratory? Here you will see many unfamiliar devices, vibrant colors, and especially new smells. Our lead scientist is actually the only human that lives here. They're quite fond of their work. Something you may notice in this area is that there is hardly any magic that resides here. Our scientists don't rely on it like you and I do. You see the blue lightning that sparks between metals and wire. This is called electricity. It's a power source that runs throughout the machinery and even illuminates the area through glass. I know it doesn't sound ideal, but I assure you it works. Currently, the scientists are above us, where the pylons are located. They seem to be practicing the ways to reanimate the dead. Of course, all they had to do was ask me. But who am I to deny their work? <laughs> oh, never mind what I said. Though it's just rambling. I have an idea. Why don't we move away from the topic and take a gander at my personal lounging area? Maybe bring something warm to cover yourself with. Or, I'm sure I can have one of my guards bring you something. Would you care to take my arm? Very well. Shall we? This is my personal lounge. I had one of my faithful servants light a fire in here in case you needed it. But make yourself at home. Feel free to relax and get cozy. I'd offer to help you warm up, but I feel as if my skin would be cold to the touch. Other than lounging about, I use this place to reflect. I have many trophies that I have claimed both from mortal and, how should I put this, non-mortal realms. Feel free to take a gander up close if you wish. Except the serrated blade next to my crown's altar, very sharp, and can inflict curses. Ah, the crown, yes. A magnificence. If I do not say so myself. Well, I did make it myself, actually. I'm not very fond of jewels and diamonds. So I decided to make one more befitting of me. This is made of abyssal steel. Something you don't find in fields of flowers nor gentle rivers. Would you care to try it on yourself? Why not? Let's see how it fits you. Allow me, my dear. <sighs> Forgive me. <laughs> it's as if you stole my breath away. It suits you. Perhaps I can make one for yourself. May I so boldly say, it would be even more befitting with you wearing the crown of your own by my side. Oh dear, am I being a bit too forward? I apologize. This is what I would have said if I wanted to lie. But why should I apologize for being honest about how I feel? I find being honest with one's feelings can save a lot of trouble. Well, you've seen a good portion of my castle, and you can see more. Once we become more familiar with each other, that is. Well, then, if you feel that way about me, go ahead and ask. I'll answer truthfully. 
There is a reason why I brought you here, you know. This sanctuary of mine defines me. What better place to get to know me? Who am I? That's silly. I already answered that question when we first met. I am Prince Nos. What am I? Ah, I see your curiosity now. I'll put it this way for you, my dear. I was not always a prince. Once I was treated like the dirt people walk on. But I chose to survive, build from the ground up, to find my purpose, and become the being I am today. I follow the same ideals that brought me here at this moment before you. The mask. I'll answer this much. The mask helps me. It helps me be the person I want to be. Sometimes I lose sight of that. So I revert to my primal ways and hunger. I spend too much time down that path. And it can be too much for someone I just met as well. So, while I wear this, I am constantly reminded to be level-headed and act in a regal manner. In a way of speaking, I know I have the potential of doing so on my own. It just helps. In the past, my emotions got the best of me. In the past, my emotions were a great fortress that I could not lay low. I had many desires. I put my trust in the wrong people. I showed kindness when I should have shown malice. I showed no mercy to those I should have. Well, there was one day in particular that I came to this realization. Even then I still needed help. After all, trust was hard to come by for me. No need to apologize. I just hope this explains why I don't want you to leave so soon. There's much potential. Especially when you have shown interest without seeing my face. My untamed form. Once I know you're ready, I'd happily show you that side of me. Oh, you think you can handle it now? <laughs> How very confident you are. But I will keep it to myself in the meantime. No need to rush. Especially if you are interested in me. Oh dear, you're shivering. Does the extra clothing not suffice? Hmm, what to do, what to do. Ah, a fantastic idea overwhelms me. Let me just put on this werewolf pelt so I do not chill you to your bone. And... Why don't we move into a small, comforting embrace? Mm. We could just leave, but I like my idea more. Plus, this was a werewolf that took care of their fur. Not to mention, it could warm you up. That's it. I knew you would come around. 
I'm tall. Hmm. I suppose to most humans I am rather superior in height. Just means the bigger my embrace would be. Now enough about me. I wish to flatter you more. And see more of the roses that appear on your cheeks. Portrait? I don't have a portrait of myself. Oh. That portrait. I told you very little about the previous ruler of this domain. Well, that's him. I keep it there to remind me how far I have come. How good I have it now compared to back then. Well, truth be told, he was my master. But not by choice. I was just like you, but in a worse state. I was freezing and hungry. I just barged into this fairy castle to beg for any help. I was prepared to crawl on all fours and even eat where the animals dined. But no. Instead, I was greeted with arms wide open by the man that would become my master. He fed and clothed me, and I slept in the best bed I've ever laid in. Then over time, that began to change. I slowly realized I was just entertainment for him. I became his favorite toy. But like people of all kinds, they eventually get bored. When he started to get bored of me, I became his glorified assistant. I learned a lot from him. Even without him teaching me, I learned manners, leadership, and power. Although in his ways, it would be trickery, tyranny, and force. Yes, he was indeed an awful thing. Perhaps I can take this one step further in regards of trust. Between us. You see, there was a point I felt I had him all figured out. But one night, he had shown me true malice. And when he was done with me, he threw me off the balcony of his bedchambers. Into the abyss of the snow. And then... I woke up. But not alive. Yet I was not dead either. I became something more. And I certainly took advantage of it. I returned to the castle... He laid in his bed soundly, as if he was pure of all evil. I just watched him sleep in disbelief. Maybe I was just surprised that he carried on as if nothing happened. Either way, my hatred woke him up. I'm sure you've had that feeling of something watching you. Right. It was an empowering moment. He looked at me. Back into my cold stare. And the first time since we met. He was the one that felt like the prey. His eyes showed fear of me. I wanted it to last but I did not wish to be anything like him. I simply carried him out by the throat, out onto the balcony that looked him in the eyes, and said, 
Thank you for making me more than I ever was. Then, well, he took a tumble, like I did, but with a wooden stake in his heart. And it doesn't seem he got back up. Then I simply took over, and no one had any complaints. In fact, we have been thriving since then. So, my dear, you may speak freely. Am I a monster? Or something evil? Are you scared of me? You're not? <laughs> How very fortunate for me. So if not a monster, then may I ask, what do you see? Potential. <laughs> How very witty of you. Might I say you have a way of lightening up the mood? Allow me to add on to the very setting that you have set. May we continue to hold this embrace? <laughs> the honor is mine. I know I didn't show you much around the castle tonight. But I truly hope you enjoyed it so far. As well as the retainers you have seen, treat them well, and they will return it in kind. Not to mention, if you're not one for cold weather, I just realized I'll have to make it up to you in some way. I'll have to do some asking around and see what we can do. Perhaps get you your own little portion of the castle that suits you temperature-wise. That is, of course, if you would fancy the idea. Perhaps getting used to the idea that this could be your new home. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll leave the subject for now. You seem a bit tired, my dear. I only say this as an observation, since you are resting your head on me. Come. You can rest here. I wouldn't mind having you use me as a pillow while you doze off. I will not be doing any lullabies. Sorry to disappoint you. Allow me to say, however, thank you for lending me your ear. Now, close your eyes. I'll carry you to your chambers once you've fallen asleep. Thank you for trusting me. And thank you for this feeling.